Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon and today I want to talk to you about a method of lateral movement and privilege escalation in an Active Directory domain and that is hunting for passwords stored by group policy preferences. Now this is actually a very simple technique to pull off but we'll go into a bit of a backstory on why this technique works, how this is introduced, then we'll go through setting this up in a lab and finally going through exploiting this misconfiguration. Now group policy preferences is something that was introduced quite a while ago in Active Directory. Essentially, it's a set of client-side extensions that allows administrators to configure some more options with group policy. Now, we're going to be focusing on things such as setting uh, local user passwords, mapping shared drives, or adding local users to groups. Many of these actions will require some sort of password to be entered and stored in a group policy object. Due to the nature of how group policy objects are distributed to clients, they are stored in the sysvol share of domain controllers and all authenticated users are given read access to them. What this means is that any user account or machine account is able to retrieve and read all group policy objects. So right now we are on a domain controller. If we just go to uh, the search bar here and type in the domain name, this is conda.local. We should see that we have this sysfall share here uh, and in this share if we just right click on here and go to properties and security you will see that authenticated users have read execute list folder contents and read so any group policy objects that are created are going to be stored in this share and accessible by anybody in the domain now while these passwords were not stored in plain text in group policy objects they were encrypted with an aes encryption algorithm but the problem is uh, back in 2012, this key was actually disclosed on MSDN by Microsoft. Now, this AES key up on screen is the AES key to all the group policy preference objects that are created in any Active Directory domain. They all use the exact same key. And since AES is a symmetrical encryption algorithm, this key that is used to encrypt all those group policy preference passwords is also used to decrypt them, effectively rendering all of the encryption of group policy preference passwords in any Active Directory domain useless since this key was closed. Now, while even to this day, group policy preference passwords are still being encrypted with the same AES key, it's really not any better than plain text since this key is available to the public right in Microsoft's documentation. And that is why Microsoft does not allow you to actually use group policy preferences to set passwords anymore. It's not considered secure at all. While you can no longer do it in modern domain controllers, something like Windows 2012 domain controller will allow you to. And if you are pen testing an organization that's been around for a while, you may find group policy preference passwords stored as something that was part of a legacy system or legacy domain that was carried over uh, with new domain updates. Sometimes a lot of technical debt can occur at various organizations and these kind of things can be left behind. But the problem is using group policy preferences was a very common way that local administrator passwords. And since this is done at a group policy level and linked to an OU, you could be setting the local administrator password for hundreds or thousands of machines to the same value using group policy preferences. And since we can retrieve that, that hashed password and decrypt it using this AES key, we could potentially get local administrator credentials or some sort of local account credentials to a large amount of machines if they're using group policy preferences. Now that we've talked a bit about this vulnerability, let's go ahead to our lab and set this up so that we can exploit it. Now, keep in mind, if you're just looking to exploit this vulnerability and don't want to follow it along, you can skip these steps. This is not part of the actual exploit of this vulnerability. Now, I'm going to jump back into our Windows domain controller here. This is a Windows 2012 R2 domain controller. The domain is conda.local, just for future reference. Now, in order to set up some sort of group policy with group policy preferences, I'm going to open up our server manager here, go to tools, and go to group policy management. Now in here, I'm just going to edit our default domain policy. You could choose to uh, create a new GPO if you like and link it to an OU. This is just the easiest way to do it. So I'm just going to right click on that and click on edit. From there, we're going to go to computer configuration preferences uh, and then open up control panel settings. Now I'm going to left click on users and groups. Let's full screen this here, see it a little bit better. And I'm actually just going to right click on here and click on new and local user. Now in here, we could be creating new local user accounts or updating them. 
Now, again, a very common thing for administrators to do was to use this to set the local administrator password across a wide array of machines. So I'm gonna go with the update action. Let's go for the username of administrator, which is the built-in account. Uh, you could rename it, change the description, but the real thing here is setting the password. Now, I'm gonna set this to something simple. We'll do like password one, two, three with an exclamation point. Perfect. And I'm going to actually uncheck this. Users must change password at next login. If we're going to go with bad practices. We might as well go all the way. Uh, we'll also go with uh, account never expires and then hit apply. All right. And now we see the password is stored as part of the GPO in Sysfall and is discoverable, although obscured. Now we know that obscured in here is, is really, it's true. It's not encrypted. It's kind of just obscured. Since the key is leaked, we can just go ahead and decrypt it. So hit apply and that should be all set. Right now that that is done, we can just close out of this and I'm going to open up an instance of PowerShell and let's see if we can just change the font size on here so that we can actually see it. Put this up to 36, that should be great. All right, and now that we can actually see the PowerShell window, the next thing that we need to do is just do a group policy update to grab those new settings we just set. We'll just do GP update and we should be good. It should go through an upgrade update group policy to the setting that we just chose. Great, and that is finished up there. Now I'm actually just gonna open up a uh, file explorer here. I'm gonna go back to our sysfall share. So just be um, two slashes and then your domain name, and then we'll go into sysfall. Uh, we have conda.local and then go into policies. And in here is where we should be seeing this group policy object that we had just created. Now, for example, I'm gonna go into, I think the late, this is the latest one. We go into machine and then preferences groups, and then groups.xml, you should see this here. Now this is the actual uh, group policy preference file that we have here. And you can see that we have this uh, C password field. This C password field is actually the uh, hashed password that we just set with group policy preferences. So you could just take this C password value right here and then use that AES key that was published on MSDN, or th there's a variety of scripts out there, and anyone who is part of the domain, a user account or machine account can decrypt this and they would now know the local administrator password to whatever machines have this group policy object linked to them. So of course, this is a huge vulnerability. Now I'm just going to go ahead and close out of this and we'll move into what it would look like from an attacker standpoint to actually uh, pull these group policy preference password files uh, and then go through decrypting them as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a command here. And this is a find string command. Now you're going to want to change this from conda.local in these two spots uh, to whatever your domain name is. Now essentially what this is going to do is it's going to go through all of the group policy files that are XML files and look for the string C password because we know that attribute is what is holding that hash password. That is what we are searching for as an attacker. Now if we run that command, we can see we get the one value for the C password here. Uh, and that is from the group policy preference that we just set to set the local administrator password. There are a wide variety of scripts that are available online that can be used to decrypt this password here using that key that was disclosed on MSDN. So if you wanted to, you could just run this find string command to locate all the C password files, uh, exfiltrate these, and then decrypt them offline, you know, not on the client network. But in this case, I'm going to show you an easier method that's going to run that find string command, find all of these group policy preference files and decrypt them for you. Now to actually exploit this, we're gonna be using a script that is provided in the PowerSploit repository. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up here. I'll leave a link below down in the description in case you've never played with PowerSploit. It is a absolutely fantastic repo full of a ton of great, great scripts. Now we're gonna be using a script called getgppasswords.ps1. We open up the exfiltration folder here and go to uh, get GPP passwords. Where is it here? There we go, get GPP password.ps1. This is the script that we're going to be using. Essentially, this is going to go ahead and find all of the group policy preference cache credentials, that C password field, and decrypt them using the key from the MSDN website. So this will do all everything that we need for us and it makes the whole process a whole lot easier. Now I'm gonna go back to our PowerShell window here. Now keep in mind, you could be running the script from any domain join Windows computer, in the case of the PowerShell version, uh, but you can even do this from a Linux machine using different methods. Uh, essentially, all you need is to have some sort of authenticated account 
to the Active Directory domain in order for you to pull those group policy password files. Remember that the authenticated users group has access to the sysvol share, which is where these group policy objects would be stored. So that means if you have command execution as a any machine account or user account, you'll be able to do this. You might have to modify your process a little bit though if you're going through Linux machine, of course, because we're using PowerShell today. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this command in here. Essentially, this is gonna download and import that get GPP password script from the PowerSploit repository right from GitHub. Now, if we run that, and now if we run the command get GPP password, uh, we run that, it's gonna search through the sysvol share and find anything with that C password attribute and go ahead and decrypt it with the key from MSDN for us automatically. You can see we get some output here. We see the files that were discovered. Um, some of these are local files. For example, this is a local file because this machine has a group policy preference applied to it. So that is cached locally on the machine. And this file path is right on the sysvol share where that actual uh, domain policy Sorry, where that group policy object is actually stored. Both of them are the exact same. We can see that C password value here and the actual plain text password that we set, which is password one, two, three, bang, and the username that it applies to. So if you ran this in a domain and you found any hits in the sysvol share, you could then take the plain text credentials here and whatever username it was applied to. In our case, and in many cases, it's going to be the local administrator, but it could be for a different account as well. Now you could take these plain text credentials with the username and password and do whatever you want from there, whether it be RDP into the machine or gain some sort of remote access or use those credentials in a different way. But here is a very easy way to get those plain text credentials that you can use for lateral movement or potential privilege escalation in an Active Directory environment. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.